Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Tales of Arise. And today I want to put together a few handy tips since we are very close to the game launching now. This time I want to talk about a few things that you'll want to know before starting the game. So hopefully you guys find this helpful. If you do, then a like would be super appreciated. And comment down below, let me know if you guys have any questions. Also worth noting, I will not be including any story stuff or any bosses in this. So footage wise, this should be pretty safe. I just want to give you guys a few gameplay tips and a few things to keep in mind when uh, playing throughout the game. So it should be pretty safe. That being said, let's start off with point number one, controlling who you use in battle. It is possible to not only change who you control in battle, but also switch out who is active at any one time. In Tales of Arise, you typically have four people in your team in battle at any one point. So that'll be four people on screen moving around. You actively control one of them and the other three are AI controlled. If at any point you want to manually control someone else, you can simply hold down L1, which you then typically use to select what enemy you're targeting. And you can then press the corresponding direction on the D-pad and it will switch this little flag in the corner and whoever has the flag active is who you are actively controlling. However, you'll note that at certain points in the game, once you get to the point where you have more than four people, there are always two people in the sort of support bracket. You can call them in by using their boost attacks, but they're not actively seen in combat. If you decide at some point that you want them in combat because maybe you want to use one of their moves and they're more effective against what you're fighting, you can then bring up the main menu by pressing the touchpad. You can then tab over to the switch option and you can then move them around in the grid. And in doing so, provided the person has finished their current action, Action, they will then swap places and again they will then be active in combat. Furthermore it is also worth noting that once you're outside of battles if you want to reconfigure your typical sort of default team layout you can then press R1 to bring up the edit panel you can then move around the different characters so that way the people on the left are the ones that will actively start in your battle setup and the support members will come later and if you then want to actively control who you're visibly walking around as on screen you can also press square to move the flag on the left hand side and again whoever has the flag next to them is who you are actively controlling in game. Next up moving on to point number two don't forget that you can also change arts mid battle when you unlock them. One of the cool ways you unlock moves in Tales of is that sometimes you'll just be playing through and organically by meeting certain conditions you'll unlock a new art and in doing so you'll activate it there and then but of course it's not actively equipped so if you decide you've got something really cool and you straight away want to start using this you can again press the touch panel you can go over to the arc screen and you can then go and select which ones you want and this will actively change your moves in combat so even if you're in the middle of a battle you can still use those brand new moves that you just unlocked obviously you could also just wait for the battle to finish and change it afterwards but this is also kind of handy because if you are in a battle and you find that maybe you're using an elemental type that is not necessarily too effective, you might decide mid-battle that you've got better, more effective moves that are more useful in that current time. So again, you have the freedom to choose. Then moving on from there to point number three, do not worry about side quests as you're playing throughout the game, or at least more to the point, don't stress about having to do them the moment you see them. Sometimes when you're playing through a JRPG, you'll of course get to the point where you start encountering side quests and you're like, do I need to do these right now? If I don't do them, am I going to miss them? Do not worry about that. It is very easy as you're progressing throughout the game. You can at any point bring up the map and you can tab over between the different regions and you will very easily see if there is a little envelope letter icon next to a region, you will know there is an active side quest there. And given that the game has fast travel, you can very easily just fast travel to different locations, go and visit the person and pick up those quests. There are a couple of times during the game when there's sort of a notable story point going on where you won't be able to fast travel for a short period of time. So of course, in that instance, you can't go around and do it but you won't then get to a point where you're like I can't go back and do this side quest I didn't do at the beginning of the game you can very easily just jump back visit them and go from there so do not worry about side quests do them whenever you want maybe you want to do them when you're playing through maybe you want to do them later the freedom is yours that then also extends to point number four, which is skits. Skits are, of course, an integral part of the Tales of games. They're fun character interactions, and you can then typically activate these when you're walking around the map. You'll see R1 in the bottom right-hand corner. When you press this, you will then have the ability to interact with the characters and watch these little fun dialogues. Sometimes, again, you might be going somewhere and you might not necessarily want to watch them right away, or you might just have missed them. Do not worry, anytime you visit a campfire, you can simply go there. You can then go over to the Reminisce tab, and from there, you can rewatch any and all of the skits even if you have already seen them you can re-watch them and if you haven't seen them you can then watch them there so don't worry if you've missed them they will a stack up and b you can always go back and check them you can even check out the cutscenes as well if you want 
Then moving on from there to point number five, make sure you explore everywhere. Now I know when it comes to RPGs that are often typically quite large scale, that can be quite daunting. However, Tales of Arise is more of a wide linear game in that it is not a completely open world. So the prospect of exploring everywhere is actually not that daunting. And in this game, it is especially rewarding because invariably, when you open the map, you will see that you have your quest marker, you'll have a designated location, but typically there will also be one or two paths that are sort of off the beaten track. It won't take you very long, nor Normally it's just one corridor or like a corridor then another room but more often than not if you take the time to go and visit these locations you will find red chests and red chests will often have gear pieces for your team. A lot of the time as you're playing throughout the game you will craft weapons but gear pieces a lot of the time come from chests and some of these are just great statistical upgrades so it is worth your time especially considering that going sort of off the beaten track to look down a corner invariably only sort of takes you five maybe ten minutes off the beaten track and it is worth your time. So explore everywhere, it's very manageable, and you won't regret it. Also on top of that, when you're in battle, don't forget that you can manually trigger healing arts. I will say the AI in this game is fantastic, especially if you have Shion and Dohalim on your team. They both have great healing arts and they are very, very good at casting them a lot of the time, whenever you need them. That being said, if you're ever in a pinch and you're in a position where you really need something to be cast specifically, you can again open up the menu, go over to the arts tab, tab over to that particular character, select their art, and forcibly have them cast them. So that way, if you're in a position where you really want healing to be a priority, you can control what is auto-casted. Then moving on from there to point number seven, for those of you guys that want to get better with the characters, you will encounter a training grounds later on in the game. I won't speak specifically about how you get to it. All I will say is that once you encounter the third region and you get to the third city, you will encounter a training grounds. This is a place for you to go to sort of take part in little challenges. But more importantly, it's also just a good chance to start learning the characters. You might have spent a large portion of the game just playing as Alphan. At this point, you might want to start learning how the other characters play, what their different abilities do, and just sort of how to switch them in combat. This is a great opportunity to jump in and start getting a feel for them. So training grounds do exist. And then finally, in at number eight, don't forget to check the skill page for your skill unlock requirements. In Tales of Arise, when you want to unlock new skills, you need to unlock new titles. New titles then unlock a new node in the skill panel. And of course, within a node, there are various different upgrades. Sometimes it's a new art, sometimes it's sort of statistical upgrades, things like that. And if ever you go over and you see a blank node on the skill tree, if you hover over it at the bottom of the screen, it'll give you details on what you need to do to unlock this title. So you can then use that to focus your attention. Additionally, if there's an art you specifically want to purchase, but maybe you don't have the battle points for it, you can also press square to add a flag to it. This is an auto tracking method. So that way, when you do have enough battle points, you will then get a notification telling you you have enough to purchase this skill. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. Those are a few handy tips you might want to consider keeping in mind before you get started with the game, just because sometimes there are those questions you have in your head, things that you sort of uh, want to know before you can begin playing, just to sort of uh, have peace of mind as you start moving forward. So again, I hope those are helpful. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments down below. And we do have more Tales of Arise content coming your way, so also keep it locked on the channel for more. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.